This is 3 News Daily. Hello, Northeast Ohio, and welcome to a brand new week and a brand new year of 3 News Daily on this Monday, January 2nd, 2023. I'm Stephanie Haney, here with your top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. And we start off here in Cleveland, where police are investigating a shooting that happened on New Year's Eve downtown. Police say it happened on Euclid Avenue near the 5th Street Arcades. That's where they say a security guard shot a 58-year-old man. He allegedly walked to East 13th Street and Superior before an ambulance picked him up and took him to the hospital. There's no word on his condition right now or what led to the shooting. Now in Portage County, the 19-year-old man accused of stabbing and killing his younger brother has been found unfit to stand trial. Instead of facing a jury, Nathan McAtee will continue treatment at Twin Valley Behavioral Health Care, which is a maximum security hospital. If mental health professionals eventually deem him competent to stand trial, he could later be tried in criminal court. McAtee was 18 at the time of his arrest and faces several charges, including murder. We have more on this story up on WKYC.com. And this morning, a man is lucky to be alive after his car was hit by a train on Bessemer Avenue here in Cleveland. Cleveland police say the driver got out of his car before the train came through and destroyed his Ford sedan. 3 News was on the scene where this happened, and officers told us the driver was shaken, but okay. Stay with us as we continue to gather more information as to how something like this could have happened. Now, it's that time of year when it seems like everyone is getting sick, and the only way to know if it's COVID-19 is to take a test. But what if the only COVID-19 tests you have on hand are expired? Our Verify team explains what you can do. Let's verify. Can you use an at-home COVID-19 test after the expiration date on the box? Our sources are the FDA and the manufacturers of some of the most popular at-home antigen tests. Abbott's Binax Now, iHealth's Rapid Test, Quidel's QuickView, and Intrivo's OnGo. You'll find the expiration date clearly printed on the packaging. An FDA spokesperson explains to us certain components and tests may degrade over time, which could mean they don't work as well. Product websites and instruction sheets will all tell you not to use a test after its expiration date. But here's the thing, depending on the test, that expiration date might not be the date on the package. Quote, since stability testing necessarily takes time, the FDA works with manufacturers to extend the expiration dates of their COVID-19 tests as additional support of stability data becomes available, the FDA spokesperson said in an email. So some tests hit stores with a shelf life of, say, eight months. If a company can prove to the FDA that it's reliable for longer, perhaps for 12 months, that shelf life can be extended. And that's what happened with eye health and on go tests. To find out how long it's really usable, use the lot number to look up the corresponding new expiration date online. A spokesperson for Abbott tells us the expiration date printed on Binax Now tests still applies. Despite the product's shelf life extension, the earlier manufactured tests had components with varying use by dates. And you'll want to make sure the whole kit is still effective. The quick view test also got an FDA authorized shelf life extension, but you'll still want to stick to the printed expiration date on those boxes and don't use the test afterwards. So we can verify you can use some at home COVID-19 tests after their printed expiration dates, but you'll need to confirm the shelf life has in fact been extended. Good to know you'll have to do a little following up on your own to figure out what you can and can't use. All right, now this is a bit disappointing. After a report from Gas Buddy came out last week predicting a drop in gas prices for the new year, what we're now seeing actually are prices skyrocket at the start of 2023. In Akron, prices have gone up about 33 cents per gallon within the last week, and the city's average now stands at $3.26. In Cleveland, prices jumped about 31 cents, with the average price per gallon now $3.24. For reference, that number is almost four cents higher than last month and nearly 17 cents higher than this time last year. Now, 3 News was at two casinos here in Northeast Ohio as people placed the first legal sports bets in the state's history. Our Isabel Lawrence explains how this is all going to work and the hype behind it. It's about time, <laughs> finally in, in Ohio. That's what I got to say. Sports betting is underway in Ohio. I can't wait to start it off with a big win for 2023. The Buckeye State allowing fans to take a gamble on their favorite teams. The arrival of January 1st, a moment Tom Ellis was ready for at Jack Cleveland Casino. Just to be able to do it, you know, come here, have fun, and, and be able to actually do some sports betting, finally. 
The Bet Jack Sportsbook and mobile platform officially launched at midnight, with Special Olympics of Ohio placing the first wager for Bet Jack. To be able to keep that money here in Ohio and for our state, which can do so much for us, it, it means a lot. At MGM Northfield Park, Matt Lewis was chosen as the first to place a bet <laughs> through the Bet MGM Sportsbook eager to show his support for the Browns. It was uh, one of those very humbling feelings when you get the phone call, and I'm very honored to be selected. Fans can also bet using the BetMGM app, now launched in Ohio. For some fans, legalizing sports betting in Ohio is yet another way to get in on the action. You can hear the energy, you can feel the energy. There's a lot of excitement. So we're looking forward to having that right here in, in uh, Northeast Ohio. Thank you for that, Isabel. Now, the Bet Jack is just one place in town that's offering this kind of thing. This morning, the Cleveland Cavaliers teamed up with Caesar Sportsbook to cut the ribbon and celebrate the grand opening of the Caesar Sportsbook at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. The event had special appearances by the Cavaliers themselves and a donation of $40,000 to the Seeds of Literacy charity. Today's the first day the Sportsbook will be open during a home game as the Cavs take on the Chicago Bulls tonight with tip-off at 7. Now, to college sports. Today is the 134th annual Tournament of Roses Parade, and it comes before the Rose Bowl. Now, we all know that these things are a New Year's Day tradition, so you might be wondering, why wasn't it on last night? Well, it's to keep with another tradition, to never hold the parade on a Sunday. But dazzling floats with thousands of flowers made their way through the streets of Pasadena last night anyway. That's because yesterday was the float judging, where 400 people gathered from across the country to see just what each float is all about. The floats took their position in the parade lineup for the five-mile route at 11 this morning. And the Rose Bowl is tonight at 5 p.m., where Penn State will take on Utah. Now here's some good New Year's news. Meet one of Northeast Ohio's New Year's babies. This little guy is Landon Arthur Nystrom, and he was the very first baby born at the Cleveland Clinic in 2023. He was welcomed into the world at 2.25 in the morning on Sunday at Hillcrest Hospital. We're told both Landon and Mama are doing great. And speaking of the new year, it's time for our question of the day. We want to know, what's your trick to keeping up with your New Year's resolutions? Post your comment to the WKYC Facebook page and we'll talk about it during What's New at 4 o'clock. I'll tell you my tip. I focus on the outcome, not the action, because that usually helps me take the steps I need to get where I need to go. That's what I do to try and keep my New Year's resolution. Get the f*** out. Leave now. Get away from my property. Don't ever come here again. Never. Now, you might remember this heated confrontation from late last year between the owner of the Christmas Story House and a cast member from the movie telling that person to leave the property. Now, according to Facebook, the two have made up, saving what was apparently a 20-year friendship. The two shared a post from the Christmas Story family page, and it shows the photo of Brian Jones, the owner, and cast member Yano Anaya with a caption that appears to be written by Anaya. Addressing the fight, Anaya said, how you come out on the other side is a choice, and Brian and I chose to sit down, talk, and rekindle a relationship that's better than it has ever been. I think that's pretty good news to start off 2023. Forgive and forget. Thanks for being here for the very first episode of the new year. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more on 3 News Daily.